Hey, what's up? I'm JK with Elevated Recovery, and today I'm going to show you 18 ways that you can win in 2018. I'm going to start off with a question. How many years have you set goals and then completely failed to achieve them? If you've always set goals and failed to achieve them every year, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can experience a definite improvement in your life in 2018. Now, I made my first serious list of resolutions as a man on January of 2004. And I actually never, I never accomplished more than four things on that list till about 2013. So that's about nine years of not hitting my goal. Nine years. Now, fortunately, I did learn a few things during those years and I'm going to share 18 of them with you today well because we're going into 2018 and because I know for a fact that you're probably only going to make use of a few of them so that's a lot of options for you most of what I'm going to share with you I'm gonna uh, warn you right now it's not normal it's not what you'd call mainstream advice the first thing to do to win in 2018 is to fail Everything worth achieving in life is going to involve failure and not just any sort of failure. If it's really worth it, it's going to involve massive failure. So there's nothing that you're going to accomplish in 2018 that's not going to be filled with failure and that won't have you falling on your face a couple of times. See, no one really cares about what you were good at in the past. No one cares about your glory days and everyone hates someone who's an expert. But who was, whose expertise only existed in the past, okay? So in 2018, learn how to embrace failure because it's a requirement for success. Secondly, let go of your past. Now just because something happened in your past and had a strong influence on, on your life, that doesn't mean that it still has to dictate your feelings and actions today. Now believing this crap is absolutely detrimental for several reasons. The first one is that being influenced by the past stops you from looking for solutions. The next is that you're going to keep generalizing in your life. So, you know, just because your father was mean to you as a child or he, he, he whooped you often doesn't mean that all authority figures are like that. Just because you were bullied in high school by the cool guys doesn't mean that all cool guys that you see now are douchebags. You also keep applying expired behaviors to current situations. So for instance, if as a child you didn't get your way, you threw a tantrum and then you sulked to get your way with your parents. So now, as a grown ass man, when you don't get your way with your partner, you still sulk and give her the cold shoulder or you lose your temper. So how would you fix this? One of the ways you can fix this is by acknowledging your past mistakes but not beating yourself up for them. So develop the habit of questioning your behavior, the reason why you do certain things. Also, accept the fact that your present is your past of tomorrow. See, the worst thing <laughs> that your past can be is a handicap, okay? It can never be crippling. Now, most people are not going to do this, but actually spend some time visualizing rough situations from your past and literally rehearse different ways that you could have handled them until the negative feelings associated with that memory are replaced with confidence, all right? So the third way to win in 2018 is to make happiness your priority. Your number one priority in life is your happiness, not the woman you're dating, not your parents, not your clients, only yours. Your only meaning barometer for success is how happy you are. Now, immediately, after watching this video, make a list in order of severity of everything which makes you unhappy. Then pick out the top three. Then write down exactly how you're going to tackle them. So for instance, I'll come up with three things for you. Let's say you're broke. So being broke and living paycheck to paycheck or maybe depending on your parents makes you unhappy. Another one is uh, not having a girlfriend and always watching pornography because you know, being lonely makes you unhappy. And a third one is, um, maybe you watch the news and spend a lot of time on social media and that makes you unhappy because you end up feeling that the world is such a negative, gloomy place and everyone on Instagram has a better life than you. So how would you tackle them? So for the first one, which is on being broke, 
you can tell you right now, like, you know what, I'm going to get a job within the next 30 days. And if I don't have one, I'm going to learn how to start some kind of business, some side hustle in the next 30 days. So for the second one, which is on being lonely and not having a girlfriend, make a decision. I'm going to talk to 100 girls over the next three months to overcome my fear of women. Or I'm going to install a porn blocker on my phone, or I'm going to give $100 to a cause that I hate every time I sleep and watch porn. Whatever you have to do to stop watching pornography. Another one could be you're going to sell your TV, you're going to delete all your social media accounts unless you're using them for business. So those are three ways to deal with those three issues. The fourth way to win in 2018 is to quit seeking approval. Now if you've spent the last few years trying to win the approval and the love of someone significant in your life, maybe your dad or your mom, it's time to stop, okay? You don't need approval. A child needs approval for healthy emotional development. An adult does not. So let's say someone who's important to you criticizes you harshly and they imply that you know, you're a loser or you're worthless. See, there are three options that you can take that don't involve being childish and falling apart, okay? So these are for people who imply that you're, you're some sort of loser. So you could say, let's say that person's name is John, okay? You're like, you know what, maybe John thinks some of my behaviors suck, okay? And doesn't want to be friends with me. But James and Peter seem pretty cool with me. So I'll just hang out with them if James doesn't like me. A second way to look at it could be like, okay, you know what, so James, um, John, and Peter, I guess these are names from the Bible, but I don't know where that came from, really hate the way I behave or the way I live my life. And you could say, you know what, personally, I, I actually like and enjoy my lifestyle. I'd much rather be me than change my ways for them. A third way to look at it could be like, you know what, James and Peter are right about my behavior. I always take and I never give back as a friend. However, this doesn't make you know, make me a loser or make me a worthless person. It simply makes me a friend who doesn't give back enough. And another way, yet another way is, you know, maybe <clears throat> Peter and James, <clears throat> all right, maybe I suck at finishing things that I start. So I can just admit to them that I have this problem and ask them for help. But if they think I'm a loser because I fall short in this area of my life, then they're simply general, uh, generalizing about me and I don't have to take them seriously. So the point is, criticism sucks and no one likes it, but as an adult, you have the choice to tolerate it and use it for your own good, okay? The fifth way to win in 2018 is to stop destructive behavior, any self-destructive behavior. So for instance, I have a client who's going to medical school and he doesn't want to finish medical school because he claims that he hates it, he doesn't like studying for long hours. Um, he's an international student here in the United States and he also feels very out of place among his classmates. He, feel that he, he feels like he's not smart enough for that particular uh, field he's studying. Um, so he wants to quit and actually start an online business. So when I started coaching him, we discovered three things about him. The first thing is he really dislikes his dad and his mom because they forced him to go to medical school. And then they took a loan to do that from his home country. So he has to pay them back. He's obligated. Next is that he has a very deep need to be accepted by other medical students, particularly American medical students, but they're just too busy to give him time of day. And finally, he's afraid of becoming a doctor and having a patient die on him during an operation. So he has three issues. He has a social issue, he has an issue with his parents, and he has an issue with his competence. And the solution to his issues, if he chooses to fix them, is to challenge and dispute all his self-destructive beliefs. So a few questions that he could ask himself are things like, you know what, am I a bad person if I go against my parents' wishes and tell them, you know what, I don't want to study medicine anymore, even though you took a loan uh, out for me. Um, another one is like, he could ask himself, why is it such a big deal if I'm not the most popular international student in med school, you know, or if I'm not acknowledged as one of the smartest students by American students, you know, like, why is it such a big deal to me? Now, acknowledging, you know, by yourself, acknowledging these questions will help you overcome the useless anxiety that usually leads to self-sabotage because it's self-destructive. The sixth way to win in 2018 is to overcome your fear of failure. Now, if you have a desire to really be unhappy for the majority of your life, okay, 
one of the easiest ways to get there, a shortcut, is to have the belief that you must be very talented in something to succeed at it. So take me for instance, JK. See, I didn't start uh, this YouTube page, I didn't start any of my businesses for a year, especially those online that involved me speaking because I thought I had to be a great writer to start a blog. I had to be a great, great at technical stuff or I had to be great at telling stories. In fact, I have a client who, he does, who doesn't enjoy sex, okay, because he orgasms too quickly. So he always thinks that he has to be a stud in bed to enjoy sex. And he only feels great when his partner orgasms first or when he's able to orgasm twice in one session of sex. Now feeling that you're only valuable as a person when you accomplish something and that if you're not above average at something else, that you are useless, you know, that's dumb because nobody can be great at everything. See, being better at one thing, like, you know, making money for instance, um, doesn't make you a better person. Usually, the need to succeed is actually a need to do better than others so that your ego can justify that you're, you're actually better than them. And a perfect example is a guy um, who fails sexually, okay, because he watches too much porn and he has porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Or he, in addition to that, he's also afraid of getting an STD, catching an STD. And maybe he's also afraid of rejection from, from women. Now, this type of person is going to keep failing because he's always telling himself, I always fail because I suck at this and I'm fearful of this different thing, whether it's his PIED or of getting an STD. So because of that, he's always going to underperform sexually. So the first step for him is just not needing to be good in bed. And then he, he overcomes that. The seventh way to win in 2018 is to stop being a victim. Now, being a victim comes from the idea that people should always be fair to you and when they're not fair to you that means that they're bad people and they should be pun punished and unfortunately uh, I feel our society is becoming more and more like that especially for Millennials a few years ago you know I hired a guy to do some marketing for my company this guy claimed to be an expert so after spending nearly twenty four thousand dollars with him over a period of six months I just finally realized that this guy was just scamming me okay so there was no increase in business by working with him um, and then he later disappeared with the rest of my money. So I was mad for a long time, but ultimately I learned three things. The first was that feeling bad for making a mistake actually creates fear of making more mistakes in the future. The second is that condemning other people for their actions is going to, in turn, cause you to condemn yourself. And the third is that taking responsibility for your behavior is just fine, it's okay. But blaming yourself is not okay, and that makes you a victim. And being responsible, taking responsibility actually destroys victimhood, while self-blame encourages it. The eight way to win in 2018 is to master your emotions. A man who doesn't master his emotions is completely lost. You master your emotions by first mastering your thinking. The greatest discipline on earth is controlling your thoughts. The ninth way is to overcome anxiety. Now, anxiety is simply worrying too much about what someone else thinks about you. That's it. So whether you have anxiety about public speaking, going to a bar with strangers, going on a date, asking a woman for her number, or having sex, it's all about being overly concerned with the outcome, which usually involves other people's opinions. So here are two simple ways to overcome your anxiety. The first way is to find out whether that situation actually involves some kind of pain or serious injury. Secondly, if it does involve some kind of pain, do something practical to reduce the danger of you um, experiencing that pain. And the third step is, if there's nothing that you can do, then just accept the pain. See, there's no other way of overcoming anxiety. When I get really anxious, I remind myself that the worst thing that could happen is that I could die. Like sooner or later, we're all gonna die anyway. So let's say that you get a fatal disease like cancer or a type of cancer which pain medication is not an option for. So you have two options. The first is that you could live with the pain and the next is that you could commit suicide. And most of us will never experience true suffering that creates an unimaginable level of anxiety. Something like being in a war zone or being a potential victim of genocide. 
or being a part of some kind of natural disaster that uh, where thousands of people lose their lives. Most of us will not be in this situation. Now make overcome anxiety your priority. If you can't do something like ask a woman for a phone number, how do you feel that you're going to be able to be in a situation where you have to stand up to someone who wants to physically harm your family? The tenth way is to make self-discipline a priority. Now some people go through life really believing that they're going to be happy and fulfilled without going through tough times. And this is false. And it's actually something I personally find quite sad because so many people, when they are young, actually avoid hard work. They avoid unpleasant situations, especially in their 20s and their early 30s. Because without fail, life always comes back to take its pound of flesh. So when you avoid difficult things in life, it has a tendency to kind of exaggerate the discomfort of, uh, of not doing those difficult things, you know? The secret of getting the most out of life is to do the difficult things instead of avoiding them. And I really say this with a great deal of love because so many guys reach out to me later on in life. Don't be the 45-year-old the guy or the 50-year-old guy emailing me years from now because you avoided the hard stuff in life. And the toughest part about this is actually inertia. Most men can't force themselves to be disciplined especially when the goal is far away and it's not immediate. Now guess what? That's the same thing that a child does. You can't motivate a toddler to persist with a long-term project, no matter how beneficial it is to that toddler. You just can't. So if you can't discipline yourself to, to do the things that are difficult and hard, that means you're still stuck in the, with those childish characteristics. Now majority of people walking around today are just like that. They need a boss to tell them what to do, and they need the threat of being fired to keep them coming to work. The 11th way to win in 2018 is to accept the things you cannot change. Now, there are a lot of things in life that you're never going to be able to change. Violence, racism, prejudice, superstition, uh, un unfair financial situations or economics, sexism, pollution, so many things, okay? But to really win in 2018, you must give up the belief that all these situations are really, really bad because you can't change them. I want you to realize that people are going to keep acting how they've always acted, regardless of how you feel. If you want to be a crusader and God and, and spend most of your life changing their minds, go for it. Unfair things which happened to you this year in 2018 are going to be much worse when you keep thinking that they're so bad that you can't live with it. And it's also more important to control your behavior and your emotions than it is to get upset about what other people do. And finally, even if you have a, a better way of doing something, okay, which you feel is unfair, the, the chances that your way is wrong are very high because nothing in life is black or white. Also realize that no one and nothing is perfect. So even the most flawless person in your life or the person that you put on a pedestal and you idolize as perfect is going to be like every other human being when you get to know them personally. The 12th way to win in 2018 is to be entitled. Stop putting women on a pedestal, especially online. Stop feeding the egos of women who are on social media just for validation. Now when you meet a woman who claims that she's something like a princess or a queen and she hasn't given you any value, leave her. Okay, keep building this habit and eventually you're going to condition yourself to seek out only the most emotionally healthy of women and don't settle for anything less. You will start feeling, when you take this approach, you will start feeling that you deserve the best woman in the world, the woman that is suited to you. The 13th way to win in 2018 is to handle your depression. Now most depressed people that I've met had a common belief and that is when they get very frustrated they must eventually become depressed and I don't mean that this is a conscious belief I mean that it is an unconscious process which has become a habit this doesn't apply to all depressed people but a lot of people that describe themselves as depressed do this so make a decision right now to make 2018 the year that you increase the level of tolerance for frustration so the more frustration you can handle, the less depressed you're going to be. 
The 14th way to win in 2018 is to stop being lazy. Now, laziness is a habit. It comes from two places. Your childhood habit of rebelling against authority figures and your deep fear of failure. So if you're thinking, you know what, I don't have a fear of failure and I want to be successful. I just find it hard to motivate myself. <laughs> then you're exactly the sort of person that this applies to. See, deep inside, you have a fear of failure. Why is that? The lower your fear of failure, the less motivation you need. So anyone who needs constant motivation has simply not tackled their fear of failure. The 15th way to win in 2018 is to go into recovery for porn or sex addiction. Now, this is something that affects a lot of people, but they still call it a porn dependency. I'm not talking about the definition of addiction, and I'm not going to get into the semantics of that. Um, many people use that as an excuse to stay in their problem. Many men reach out to me asking for help with quitting porn. And when I dig deeper, I realize they did, that they actually have an addiction. Sometimes some of them even have a, a, a deeper sexual addiction. And as soon as I tell them they have an addiction, a lot of them disappear. Why? Because it takes guts to admit that you have an addiction. It doesn't matter whether you're 19 years old or you're 25 years old or you're 39 years old. Porn addiction doesn't discriminate. The 16th way to win in 2018 is to stop getting motivated and forget about your purpose. Now, watching motivational videos, attending motivational seminars, reading motivational books and blogs is great. That's, that's okay. However, the majority of your motivation has to be internal. It can't be based on always watching a video or reading a book whenever you feel down. And the way to become internally motivated is very simple. Take action. So action, and the reason why is because action creates momentum and momentum creates results. Having a purpose is actually a luxury. So the guy who is cleaning the toilet or the guy who's been cleaning the toilet at the mall for the past 12 years knows that purpose is a luxury. The guy cleaning the streets knows that purpose is a luxury. It's nice to have a purpose. It makes life more exciting. But if you don't have it, don't spend your days moping around, complaining that, oh my goodness, I'm unfulfilled because I can't find my purpose. Again, a purpose is a luxury in life. The 17th way to win in 2018 is to realize that no one is coming. Understand that no one is coming to save you. No one is coming to make things right in your life. No one is coming to help you overcome your bad habits or teach you how to be successful or get you your dream woman. No one is coming to pay your bills, to make you a better looking person or to cure your depression, your sadness or your addiction. No one is coming. This is going to teach you to love yourself in a healthy way. Embracing the concept of no one is coming. In 2018, your life is in your hands, especially as a man. All our relationships with our parents, kids, partners, lovers, co-workers, we're just human beings trying to make the most of our limited time on this planet. At the end of the day, we came into this world alone and guess what? Doesn't matter what religion you believe in, you are going to leave this world alone. One of the greatest and the most empowering gifts that you can give yourself is the acceptance of being alone. You can be with other people just as fully as possible to love and to live with them, but you will equally be with yourself and love yourself fully and be with yourself fully. So if you need to write that down somewhere so that it sticks, do that and stick it on a mirror so that you'll see it every morning. The 18th way to win in 2018. There are always two stories for every unfortunate situation that you see in life. For every man with a disability, let's say he lost his limbs, there's one begging on the street and there's another who is a successful motivational speaker. For every man who is addicted to porn or sex, there's another who found purpose in love, in duty, or just out of fear and did whatever it took to overcome their addiction. There's a man who lost all his money late in life and chose to live in poverty and there's one who rose above it and regained his wealth later in life in his 60s and 70s. There's a man who chooses to let his background, his economic status, his race, um, or what he's been diagnosed with hold him back. 
So there are a lot of men out there who believe like, you know, the fact that they're black men or that they're Asian men or that they're men with ADHD or they're white men or Indian men or they're men who are sexually abused, that they can't do anything or they aren't allowed to do things. And there are also those who choose to push past these societal and mental stereotypes. See, personally, I overcame ADHD, prejudice, low self-esteem, depression, a lot of compulsive disorders, and extreme poverty, like no food for days poverty, to accomplish many things. And much, much more to come, simply because of one core belief that I always talk about. And that is that I am in control of my story. Not society, not some employer, not my past, not my upbringing, not my education, not my race or culture, and not some mystical being in the sky. No one is writing your story. You write your story. See, life promises you only one thing, and that is that time is going to pass and you're going to die. So life is like a river that just keeps flowing, and the destination is the same for everyone. That's death. How you make your journey is up to you. Now you choose your story by changing the statements that you make to yourself. Start from a very, very simple place, don't make it complicated. Change uh, statements like, I can't control my sexual behavior and it's impossible for me to control my urges, to it's challenging for me to control my sexual behavior. That alone will transform your daily recovery life. Simply changing the phrase from it's impossible or you can't to the word challenging. And there you have it, the 18 ways to win in 2018. Now you don't have to use all of them right away. These are lessons that I've learned over the course of my recovery from porn addiction. Picking one or two and committing to do your best to master them will serve you better than trying to apply all of them to your life. Now if you found this video helpful, share it with three of your friends because you never know who is going to benefit from it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And when you do, click on the little bell symbol next to the subscribe button to get notified when I post a new video. Again, I post videos twice a week. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle, and I wish you all the best in your recovery from your porn addiction.